Okay. Hi, I'm Siobhan Sarna, and I'm the founder of SIBO SOS. And the SOS has come to mean save ourselves. It was very organic. It just happened that way one day. I was like, oh, wait, we have to do it ourselves. Okay, SOS, save ourselves. And I did want to be rescued in the beginning, big time. Who doesn't want a good rescue, right? But the other thing is that I um, created a foundation, uh, not a foundation, uh, I do have a nonprofit for underfunded medical issues, but I also have a platform called Chronic Condition Rescue that deals with lymph, fascia, biological dentistry, the liver gallbladder as well. And these things that I didn't feel were being talked enough about in mainstream medicine and conversations, but I saw thousands of people being impacted by them and I knew enough to know that if we dealt with our lymph and fascia, a lot of things would clear up for people. So I've done summits on those topics, et cetera. During it all, I've had a friend and mentor and coach and colleague, Stephen Wright. And Stephen is here with us today to talk about how to de-stress with some topical magic called be serene, instant relief. You feel calmer within 10 minutes, individual results will vary. And it's not happened for me and all of that. But I, Stephen, was resistant to this, as you may know. I know you know. And so I- resistant. So, so resistant. resistant. So resistant. I'm sorry. I started using it. And the very first night that I used it, I was like, I'm a dumb dumb. I should have been using this the whole time because I slept so beautifully. Stephen is an engineer by original training. He's had gut health issues that caused him to help himself and then go on to help millions literally of people through his online education and resources. He has a beautiful supplement company and he's going to teach us today about how to reduce our stress and get better sleep and some very special ingredients that aren't mainstream to say the least. Hello, my friend. Hey, Siobhan. Thanks for having me on. Good to have you. Good to have you. So let's talk about how we can get a better night's sleep. I know you and I both have hacks for that. I did the overnights for six years, full makeup at like, you know, two, three in the morning, getting home at seven, eight in the morning, whatever, horrible. And so my circadian rhythms were really messed up. I know what it's like not to sleep well. Um, talk to us about some of the advancements you've seen in sleep science and technology. I'm yeah. So I, I've had sleep issues my, my entire life as well. I mean, no surprise, right? Gut, gut issues, sleep issues, right. gut issues, mental health issues. Like, you know, the gut is connected to so many things and the, the other parts of our physiology are connected back to our gut. And so, yeah, I, I happen to be a very sensitive, I was, I was sort of laughing to myself as you were doing that intro. Cause I was like, man, I am the, the least, uh, I'm like, I'm not like super chill. I'm not like, I don't have like my yoga vibe game, like figured out. I am, you know, I tend to go towards anxiety. I tend to have sleeping issues. Like if you were trying to talk to somebody about like having that Zen life, that perfect sleep life, uh, you would only talk to me as if you've struggled with these problems and you haven't really found answers because that's really the only thing I can share upon because I have not achieved you know, perfect harmony and <laughs> perfect results yet. Um, and that's, you know, that's kind of how we got to this, this product today. I've been tracking my sleep since 2011 when some of the first headbands came out because I've known how important sleep is. And I'm one of those people who, uh, I lay down at night. I do the blue blockers. I can do the blackout curtains. I have been using earplugs since I worked third shift at a manufacturing plant um and had to sleep during the day and so that's when i first started using earplugs yeah um now i cannot function without them which is a sad little res you know thing that's happened but um so i've tried white noise machines i've tried uh any supplement ad that comes at me with sleep i buy it <laughs> i try it uh it's still to this day just in case um and so yeah i i you know all those things are important and i think i have some cool like I've had some cool ahas actually in the last uh, 60 days actually for sleep. And so, you know, there's some, some really cool stuff. So we can talk about that stuff. And then also the, the B3 product and how that has been an addition to my stack to, you know, really actually allow me to deal with kind of a pretty stressful life. Yeah. Yeah. You've been going through it. Uh, so what are some things you've learned in the last 60 days? That's cool to know. So I, Again, I've been doing this stuff online since 09. I've been a hyper consumer. And so I was trying mouth taping back in like 
2010, 2011, 2012. Right. Um, but I never tried the the breathe right strips, the nasal strips. Yeah. And so just in December, I started doing the mouth taping and the breathe right strip. Love that. And that has been like a total next level boost for me. Um, the mouth taping always felt kind of weird. And because my sensitivity to my environment goes up and down, like sometimes my nasal passages are, are a little blocked, you know? Um, we have construction going on in our house. There's a lot of dust. It's not like, like a perfect environment. Um, and so this combo of actually putting on the nasal strip and then mouth taping has really allowed me to go to that next level on that part of it. And actually, I feel much more rested. Even when I have like a a junkie, like last night was not a great night of sleep. We we were traveling back from Arizona. Our plane was super delayed because of all the rainstorms. And um, anyways, it just wasn't an easy entrance into bed last night and um and so i don't i'm not that rested yeah. but doing the the breathe right strip and the mouth taping i have so much more energy the next day even though i know my scores sucked on <laughs> you know whatever tracker i have well that's interesting because i went to an ear nose and throat specialist after going to a biological dentist that specialized in sleep and my airway is very small. Has anyone had a cone beam and had a biological dentist tell you that you have a small airway, whether it's because you have too many teeth removed or there's so many reasons why do you have a reverse curve in your neck? I've got both those things going on. That's often from whiplash and um, your teeth grinding. And then the teeth grinding is actually part of the sleep apnea profile because the body is trying to wake you up so you don't die basically. And that's how you can crack teeth, break teeth. Um, also, which came first, the nasal congestion or the additional teeth grinding, small airway. It's a whole cycle. I, um, it turns out I have a deviated septum and I didn't know that. And she's like, you could have had it all your life. Or I'm theorizing the mold exposure may have with all the, the uh, pressure and um, inflammation actually moved that bone or that cartilage to be um, at deviated, which is like, uh. so I can do three things. Flonase, which is floating around here, which I'm not being compliant with because it scares me. So I have some other holistic things. After a month of that regularly, I'm supposed to do, see how I do. Otherwise we can shoot radio waves into my septum. And if that doesn't work, then I could have surgery. So I'm trying everything to avoid that. But the bottom line is there are a lot of reasons why we don't sleep, right? Is the cat or the dog on the bed? One of the number one reasons why people don't sleep well is the pets on the bed. Am I giving up my cat on my bed? I am not. Thank you very much. <laughs> right? <laughs> or do you sleep next to a heavy breather when they're sleeping? And then like sometimes David will be a little bit loud just heavy breathing from his congestion or whatever, I'll put in the earplugs and it's like, oh my gosh, that must've been really bothering me because my earplugs in now, I'm you know totally resting and passing out. So there are all kinds of reasons why, um, but airways are definitely something for everybody to investigate as well. And sleep apnea is real and the tests for them now, fortunately are becoming a lot easier. You don't have to necessarily sleep at a strip center, shopping center like I did twice. Um, you can do tests at home. And then through like Bluetooth and then through just the, um, an app, the doctor's office gets it. So those are some things to be thinking about. But yeah. And so I've done those sleep tests, uh, not at the centers, but I've done the take home tests. Those are terrible. Um, there was actually, there's a, a new company that just launched a, the first FDA approved uh, at home wearable ring that is even more sensitive than a sleep, sleep study center data. And so, um, I haven't placed my order for it yet. It's like 500 bucks, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that soon. I just heard about it on the Tim Ferriss podcast uh, a couple weeks ago. So I don't even know the name of it. I'm sorry, but Tim did a, a podcast a few weeks ago on that. So I, I, I buy all these things. I, I have a, a, just a bin of devices that didn't work out. Like the ones that are supposed to like entrain things and, and just have never worked. And so, it's real. It's it's sleep. Sleep issues are real for those of us with uh, busy, stressful lives, but also with sensitive nervous systems. Exactly. So let's talk about some things that we do to fix them. So magnesium, yeah. 
blue blockers, face masks, ear plugs, mouth guards. It's very sexy. Uh, the CPAP, super sexy. I mean, it's like, <laughs> yeah, get, get your love on before you go and get all geared up, if you know what I'm saying. But um, when I saw you oh. last year, last year, year before at um, that conference, and you were like, Siobhan, you have got to try this. And then I just have more recently tried it because I was resistant. I'm sorry. Um, I love it. It's called Be Serene IR. And there is a an oral yeah, supplement. And that's, the, and that's the old label for the record. That's, okay. See, this is how but. long I've had it. But there's, <laughs> so that's the, um, this is topical, which I also love because Steve and I talk about um, pill fatigue all the time. Tell me again what you said to me in the lobby of that hotel because you were like, there's this thing in it and it's called Malungu. That was the so, thing. Malungu is a is a herb out of Brazil and they've been using it for centuries for insomnia, for anxiety, uh, for sleep, generalized sleep issues. We would probably call it more of like generalized nervous system issues is kind of how they they do it. They normally, it's a tree bark, they normally turn it into a tea. Um, and so this product, basically what we do is we get the Malungu and then we do an extraction, a water extraction process and put it in there. And the, the studies so far in humans are, are a little light, but there's been a few of them where they compared them to prescription uh, anti-anxiety medications while they remove your molar, which is, I don't know how many people have had their teeth removed. I actually have uh, a few of them. It is one of the most anxiety producing experiences. I mean, just getting a cavity filled, I feel like is a lot of anxiety. So I would never volunteer for that study. And I'm grateful some humans did. Um, but it but it showed that it, it worked on par with this uh, older type of anti-anxiety medication. Um, it didn't really beat it, but it, and it also didn't affect the vital signs of, of the humans, which is really cool. And so this, this herb is... Um, really special in that it's working on various uh, receptors in the brain and sort of upregulating those receptors and their ability to accept neurotransmitters that can um, downregulate the sympathetic drive that we have. So basically like we have receptors on all of our different cells. Those receptors could be like open and ready to accept whatever they're meant to get. So estrogen receptors to get estrogen, they could be blocked um, and but they can also retract into the cell. They can actually like they call it down regulation, but they can actually like retract away and be like, even though estrogen's right here, it could like the receptor can pull back because the cell doesn't want it. And so what certain herbs like malungu do, and this is not just malungu, this is a lot of different adaptogenic herbs, is they can upregulate the receptors to come back out and accept the, in this case, down regulation neurotransmitters to help us kind of chill out. And so that's when you hear about um, adaptogenic herbs. It's one of their properties is they're not necessarily pushing to make one thing in your body, uh, like produce more of something or produce less of something. They're just trying to make it more sensitive to what's already there and help get it unstuck from whatever pattern it's in. And I think that's the that's where the HRV research is going. That's where the nervous system research going. Like, I don't, I know you've done some trauma work, Siobhan. I think you actually did like a summit on it as well. I've been doing this a lot as well uh, over the past few years. And I think as we, those of us who are early adopters, when I was working on this stuff in like 2015, what you find out is that the big events around trauma in our nervous systems, releasing those, talking about those, that's all well and cool. But just like every single sort of uh, meditation practitioner will tell you, when you leave the meditation retreat is when the work starts. And so when you leave the trauma or the nervous system, you know whether it's neurofeedback or it's some sort of trauma training, when you leave that and you go back to your regular life, that's when the that's when the work actually starts because your body is responding to its environment and to the people and to the sequences in a sort of a fixed way. And that exposure was trying to, to break that out. The problem that I think we find is that we just mold back into the old ways. And so that's where things like Malungu and some of these herbs can help reestablish a different nervous system pattern so that we're not just falling back into our old ways. It's 
remarkable and it really, really works. I just wanted to show you something. Here's some of the ingredients, guys. I know we we know Stephen for, if you're a regular, for his HCL and his Holozyme enzymes and all that. Um, and by the way, we do have the $15 off plus free shipping. Um, if you are interesting, inter if you're interesting, you can have some of this stuff <laughs> if you're interested. And I also have a, a, a special for you. So hold on, let me just show you this. Um, Am I, this is, this is the, this is what it looks like now. And yes. we're in 10 minutes. That's a big promise, but I so, definitely experienced it. Yeah. So the other thing is that it's, 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 so it has a ton of malungu in it and a lot of GABA and L-theanine and people are probably familiar with GABA and L-theanine as sure. supplements that could be helpful for sleep or for relaxing the nervous system. My my belief is that those of us with chronic gut issues, we either have a gut that is unwilling to really absorb GABA um, and L-theanine or some combination of our receptors in our gut and our microbiome make it such that the it's consumed inside the gut before it ever gets to the bloodstream. And so my experience with this a few years ago when I was first introduced to topical uh, GABA and L-theanine was like, a, it's similar to yours, it was like mind-blowing. I was like, whoa, I've never felt, I've tried a lot of different GABAs. I've never felt it like this. This is really cool. It, it, it was remarkable. It really was. There's also California poppy. That's interesting. Yeah. So California poppy is a, is a newer herb on the herbalist landscape because it's in North America based herb, but for the last hundred years or so, um, California poppy is not in the, the poppy opium family. It's a different yeah. family of, of, uh, flowers if you will herbs so there's no there's no like opium or opium derivatives or anything like that it just has some really cool properties around um pain as well as um an adaptogenic uh take on the the nicotinic receptors inside the body so it can be very helpful for balancing um upregulation and downregulation and a little bit on the pain side so california poppy is a really cool herb um it's making a comeback it was really big in the 90s um, but then, you know, uh, I think with this, the advent of, of some of the stronger narcotics, it got a bad rap, but it's making a big comeback now. And then Albizia is this, I mean, it's literally called the happiness herb or the happiness bark. And, um, it's got some really cool dopamine and upregulating compounds for mood regulation out of Japan and sort of the, the Asian markets. And so it's used a lot over there. So the, the combination of all of these ingredients, by the way, was not done by me. I didn't, I didn't sit back on PubMed and like think about all the studies. Um, normally, that, that's kind of how I do things. Um, this was actually a uh, in conjunction with an MD researcher who initially built the first formulation, and then a master herbalist out of California. And this guy's like, we're talking master herbalist. Like he has a whole garden. Um, he has his own practice. He, he can taste the herbs, whatever kind of herb it is, and kind of immediately know uh, Chinese medicine qualities of these herbs oh. and Ayurvedic qualities of these herbs. And he, because he grows them and he's always testing them in clinic as well as in his garden, he knows like this year's crop versus last year's crop is like, oh, this one's a little stronger than last year or whatever. And so this blend is the combination of all three of our brain powers to come up with this formula. And I love that it's topical. So you can just rub it on and relax. Any tips for that? Do you rub it like behind? I just, I like put it on my wrists. I mean, is yeah, that so I, I do. So I do just like three dollops on my, my wrist like this. And if it, if it gets a little messy, I'll grab a little bit and hit like behind my ears back there. If I'm, if it's a really stressful day or a really stressful night, I will sometimes put a little, you know, a little bit of the the cream up on the temples. That's the the skin on the temples and the skin like on the back of the neck and stuff. This is closer to the vagal nerve. It's closer to the brain. It doesn't, you don't need to put it up there. Um, just any sort of like thin skinned area. And so the wrists are usually the the, the best spot. There's also, you can just, you can start with a half pump if you consider yourself really, sensitive you can do i don't know i think i might have tried a half bottle and one night of fury um and i'm still here so 
I am not going to even do this right now because I do not want to get like so chill afterwards because I still have things to do today. But um, this is so I I have this by my bed. And as soon as I'm out of this, I'm going to be ordering two more bottles and I'm going to put one in my bathroom and one in my bedroom. And here's why. Sometimes I get up, my husband is sleeping and I'm like, oh, darn it, I'm awake. And then I go rummage around my bathroom for like something to help me relax because I don't want to get overstimulated by going down to the kitchen. And so I have another set of earplugs in my bathroom in case like they've fallen out in the night. So I'm going to make a little basket of like the emergency sleep kit in the bathroom where it's quiet and I can be like, okay, now I can go back to the bed and be all, shh. so this yeah. is. Yeah, we have people that put one in their purse. Um, you know, it can it can be really down regulating. And so we don't, we, we say, you know, don't do this and drive. Um, you know, there's no real like um, crazy risk or anything like that, but like you just have to be an adult here and um, just know that it's built to, really relax you whether you're anxious whether you're having angry whether whatever you're feeling um you know a lot of ruminating thoughts that's that's where it really works the best um ruminating thoughts let's talk about it so what i've also found that and can anyone relate to this like i'll have a ruminating thought and then i'll play a little bit of music even if there are no words sometimes better if there are no words and that will lift and then i can drift off to sleep so it's a, it's real. Like if you have those thoughts, they will keep you up. Um, Sydney's saying, I'm laughing so hard hearing your sleep story. I guess it's normal marriage. Who knew? Yeah, I know. Right. Who, who talks about it, but oh yeah, it's, it's real. Yeah. It's real. I mean, this is this cream. Um, if she, if Shay was on this, this conversation, I think she's told Siobhan when we saw each other this fast fall, but this, this cream, Shay is my wife and, uh, there's been nights where I've, I, she's like, what are you doing over there? Are you wrestling someone? Like what is happening? And, uh, she doesn't get it because she's, she's, she's like really good stuff. at sleeping. Yeah. And so with the introduction of the cream, it really helps me with those nights. I don't take it every night. It's the nights where I just can't seem to fall asleep or I can't get back to sleep. Yeah. And, um, she's like, it just totally dramatically changed how much I was rolling around then waking her up. Um, Seriously, and so pets and partners, they're the ones, they're the ones keeping us up. Seriously. Also, <laughs> if there's a little bit of light in the room, I am out of luck. Like I'm really out of luck. And I, um, yeah, I have blackout curtains. I have shades. I have the whole spiel, the whole, if the air conditioner is too loud, I cannot sleep. It's terrible, especially in hotel rooms. Mm. Anyway, anyway, the struggle is real. And if you cannot relate what we're talking to, what we're talking about, and you're just like, I just need to calm down. My sleep is fine. Great. This will help you with that as well. Um, it really works. I can see why you were so excited about it when I first saw you. And I wanted to tell you um, one other thing here real quick. Um, when it's alcohol can be awesome for when you want to use it for that, but so could other coping mechanisms like B serene IR. So I'm not saying it's one or the other. I'm just saying it's part of my nervous system management package. And so part of my nervous system management and what I need to wind down from my stressful life is I use the B serene daily capsules as well as I use the magnesium glycinate. And so I, I, I do those in combination. That's my nightly routine. I do those with dinner actually. Um, and then and then I use the cream if I'm laying down to bed and I just can't unwind or I wake up, you know, I've been in bed since 10. All of a sudden I wake up, it's like 12 and I'm like, oh, no, not one of these nights. Um, and so that's that's part of my sort of like go to sleep slash nervous system management. And I, and I really hope that people are starting to think about their nervous systems in that regard. And if you're struggling with sleep, just know whatever you choose, whether it's B-Serene IR or magnesium glycinate from another company, play around with the dosages. Like every time I talk, I try to mention that what, what is created here? Like, I didn't, I don't know you. I, I, I can't know you. I can't like watch you and be like, oh, you're definitely a, a one pump a day or you're a four pumps a day. But if we can experiment with those different combinations, like what I find is I need three B serine caps and three magnesium HP caps. And I don't use this nearly as much um, because of that. Um, and so I, I hope that people play around with it. And like, I noticed, 
you know, for myself, I'm a three or four pump person. I don't even mess around with two. It's not going to, it's not going to get what I want, which is I want that immediate down regulation, relaxing 10 minutes or less. I'm, you know, conked back out and I don't have to pay any drowsy price in the morning that I would if I do CBD or things like that. I pay a hefty price if I use CBD or THC. I, I've had some, um, CDB, CBD, but, uh, gummies. Ooh, not for me. Not for me. No, thank you. It, I do. I pay the price too. Um, it's $15 off on your cart there. And, um, you use, you don't need a code to answer somebody's question there in the U S there is free shipping and handling. You do need to use the link right up there in the chat and the oral B serene, which is different, right? They're great together. It's out of stock right now. Um, and also the $15 off is not on like the subscription auto ship. It's just on the single, but Steven, when yeah. do you guys expect the, um, oral back? We expect that back in March. So it's, it's going to be a little bit longer, um, but it, it's coming. Um, we were upgrading the quality of the, the ingredients as we do. I, you know, every single formula, I'm always trying to make it better, stronger, cheaper, cleaner, all those types of things. So we are upgrading it and we hit some, some holiday snags that have pushed everything back, but it's coming. It'll be better than ever when it's out. Um, but I don't want people to wait for the B-Serene IR. Like there's things that I've said that, like, for instance, like, okay, so I gave this product to Siobhan almost a full year ago, maybe actually 18 months ago. And people sleep on my recommendations. Like, for instance, I told people with Tributor Next, I said, look, I know you're using one and two and you're feeling better. But if you use three to six, everything from our clinical doctors are telling us the there's like a boom. There's like a light switch moment if you do three and above a Tributor Next. And people... <laughs> just weren't believing me. So we, we built a whole challenge around upping the dose to three or more. And the testimonials that are coming in are like out of this world. It's so cool. So I'm telling you the same thing's true with this stuff. If you have the nervous system that Siobhan and I have, if your nervous system is a little too cranked up, if you're a little sensitive to the world, if you're like racing redundant thoughts that sometimes you can't get to go away no matter what you do, then this product I'm telling you is for you and you can updose it and downdose it to whatever you need based on the day. That And that's the key. Some days it's really, you know, for me, some days it's a really hard day. Like for instance, there's a lot of pressure. We're out of HCL. We're out of B-Serene. My, my mom is mad at me. You're, you're all mad at me. Everybody's mad at me right now because we ran out of stock. I'm really sorry about that. And so there's a lot of pressure that I'm pushing as fast as I can to get this stuff in the stock. And so I'm using more, I'm using more coping mechanisms than normal. And so I really don't want people to sleep on this. If you have the nervous system that we're talking about. Yeah. And the other thing is how, what about kids? Like what I was thinking of like my test anxiety and stuff. I wish I had had this when I was in school. That would have been amazing. How would, I mean, is yeah, there we do a have a, yeah, a, a two and up is um is kind of the general yeah two and up is kind of generally recommended um we do have some folks with kids who have de developmental issues they're on the spectrum and it helps them go to school it helps them be it do normal situations we have people with social anxiety who use it going out to the grocery store going to a party going to family events um so it 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 can be used. You would want to use a lower dose, right? You want to use a half pump or a pump and you'd want to know, um, you want to know your body. So like the first time you use it, don't use it and then go to the party, test it like on a day where you don't have to do anything. Right. So you can know, because we get people that complain that it doesn't work, but we also get complaints that like one pump and they want to go to sleep right away and, and whatnot. Um, like we actually have a, <laughs> my favorite testimonial is this lady wrote in and she said, I bought this for my husband. I gave him one pump and he fell asleep immediately. This is great for sleep, but bad for sex. <laughs> there you go. Individual results. <laughs> Mary, yeah. uh, we just rated this PG 13. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so here it is. It's something for you all to consider. I, I I've got a couple more questions coming in here. Um, how many pumps in a bottle? Great, Maria. Great question. Uh, 60, 66, 64 to 66. Okay. So I know this is off topic, but when do you expect the HCL to be back in stock? Again, in the next month. 
in the next month. Sorry, Brent, you already probably said. probably sooner. The ACL will be the first one in stock. We're paying every overage we can to force everyone to go as fast as we can. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, so top tips for sleep for me is this your topical B Serene IR. I love it for that and for just calming the heck down. Great for airplane travel. Like when I do an overnight flight, I used to do a Benadryl, which like you pay. You're like, what if we have a problem, Boeing? Individual results of very no legal claims. And then I, you know, I want to be able to be super alert in case there's an issue. So I didn't like the Benadryl. This is phenomenal for that. And then also just even in the, uh, again, I am very sensitive. So even like in the airport itself and the people watching and the waiting, oh my gosh, it's so hard on me. Um, and then also the um, earplugs, the uh, blackout curtains, the tape over the little, you know, LCD, LED, green lights, red lights that are coming from your cable box and all that. Ideally, you should be turning off your routers and the internet overnight. Good luck with that. It's very hard to do. Um, and then uh, pets, you really need to consider like, can they have their own spot on the bed so they don't have to decide every time? You know, they go to the left, think about it. No, I'm not going to go there. They go to the right. Oh, no, I'm not going to sleep here either. They go in the middle. No, not, I mean, it's literally like Goldilocks, right? But if you give them their own little bed on the bed, that does help to reduce the motion on the ocean kind of thing. And then if your partner is loud or you've got a loud air conditioner or you can hear the road noise, earplugs, definitely. There's also, even when I've been- quiet i still use the earplugs because it really does help just even like a psychosomatic like shut it down it's part of the ritual what were you gonna say yeah. the only two things i would add in there is temperature control so yes. you know turn down your thermostats at night by three to three to five degrees if you can um, at my house i run very hot um my wife makes fun of me and says i'm the menopause man sometimes because i'm so hot she runs very cold. So we have uh, we have an eight sleep device, which is a hot and cold pad that you lay across your mattress and she can heat her side and I can cool my side. And then it uh, it generally does that by your sleep cycle. There's also the Uller device from Chili Pad. So they do the same thing, but they're controlling the temperature of your bed individually per side. That was a, That's a really big deal for us, especially in the warmer months. Um, in my sleep. And then I, I do want to bring up one really important thing, which is that uh, I've, you know, I have a aura ring. Um, I, this is my third aura ring. I've pause, had a lot of other. For a second. Hold on. There's no coupon guys. It's automatically applied at checkout. Am I, I'm saying that right. Right. Yes. Did I say that wrong? You guys, there is no coupon. It's just $15 off when you well, use our link. Um, score, yeah. And if it does no coupon, right. We okay. switched it. So that's just, it's automatically applied at checkout, I thought. Yeah. And if it's not being applied, because some people have pop-up blockers, they have cookie blockers, there's all kinds of stuff going on. So okay. if it doesn't work, just email us at support at healthy gut. Okay. And if you're trying to get your webinar bonus, we'll take care of you in case it happens just after that. Clarissa is saying, but if you don't see the $15 off, then you can use coupon code SIBOSOS. Right. Okay. Um, and then if you, Clarissa, if you can give out the customer service email address, sorry to cut you off there, Stephen. I just knew there were some questions. Um, okay. Yeah. The, the other sleep devices you were talking about, the aura ring. Oh, so yeah. So the, the temperature sleep devices are eight sleep and then the Uller device from chili pad. So either one of those two, if you're, um, if you're a sleep tracker, I think it's I think it's really important if you've never tracked your sleep ever to find either a whoop band or an aura ring or whatever you want to do just to get some baseline data. But I and a bunch of other people I've talked to now um, have created a anxiety around the sleep score and what the sleep says that then punishes me all day long and then punishes my sleep because then I'm nervous about it. And so if you're suffering, maybe I'm the only one, but I know of at least a few other my friend group alone who have this issue, I would say do not look at your sleep data until after noon, like noon of the day that you wake up. Do not look at your iPhone. Don't look at your sleep data until it's lunchtime. And the reason why is because, like I said, I've been doing this for over 10 years. What I started to notice was that 
uh, my sleep scores, including if I generate my own sleep score, like irrespective of an app and it's AI, whatever, whatever. If I just look at how many sleep cycles I got, how many minutes of deep versus REM versus light, um, that has almost zero correlation to how I feel when I wake up, which is just like so frustrating uh, for a nerd like me is that I could have absolutely amazing numbers by any sleep doctor's metrics and feel like junk, like so tired, so sleepy, so like, gosh, what happened last night? I had it. I was doing it all right. I did the 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 lights and I did the earplugs and I did it all and I just, ah. And then I look at my numbers and they're great. And that makes me even madder then because I'm like, I, now I don't even understand. But also I could wake up feeling refreshed, ready to go and be like, huh, that was a better night's sleep than I thought it was going to be. And then look at my data and see that I got like a 60 or a 50. And then I'm like, ah, oh, what did I do wrong? Blah, blah, blah. So anyways, the, the measurement and tracking of our sleep, I would really urge you to look later in the day so that it doesn't mess up your day, no matter what it is. And also just remember that these technologies are uh, fallible still. Like we still don't understand sleep. We still don't understand how many minutes of deep and minutes of REM and all these things that are needed for your individual preference. Again, go listen to that podcast. Tim Ferriss just did a few, uh, few podcasts ago with the performance expert. He'll tell you more. I think what he's telling people, which is about how many respirations are you getting is a lot better um, to track than what's my HRV number, what's my sleep score number. Um, if you can drop your respirations down, all those other numbers get better and typically you feel better. And so for instance, that's my orientation now is how low can I get my respirations at night down? And that's the only number that I care to look at when it comes to my sleep data. And again, I don't look at it. Sometimes I don't even look at weeks at a time because I'm so nihilistic about the data at this point, but yeah. that, that respiration number is real. So are you talking about like James Nestor in the book, breathe and like that slowing your sleep down or slowing your breath down that kind of respiration number? Yeah, that's a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Basically how many, how many respirations you take per minute and yeah. And so, yeah, breathe and, and what James has done is part of that. But this would be how do you get your nervous system and your your sleep set up correctly so that you drop it down at night when you're trying to fully be parasympathetic and you're just trying to fully relax? I'm looking for that book. Uh, it's yellow. It, I can see it right there. That book, um, my husband and I were on a trip and we just listened to it on the road trip and we are super picky about Audible and that kind of thing. But he did a great job, James Nestor, on um, the narration of it. And so if you're not really into reading a book right now or Kindle or whatever, and you're open to listening, I highly recommend it. And it will really change a lot of your perspective about things. <laughs> Pardon me on that note. Okay, let's see. Um, so true. There's a fine line between helpful and overwhelmed. Yeah. With everything we track. You're right, Carla. I have my aura ring open under sleep. Do you mean average oxygen saturation? You guys, I have to get oh, a but, sip of water. I'll let you keep going. Yeah, no, but average, average, uh, your, your oxygen saturation is great. Like you want to know that number, but again, why these sleep trackers are most important is flagging like really bad things. They're not great for like everyday management, which is what what we're finding what what they are great for is catching like um these are vert problems that would totally tank your your health as well as your sleep one of those things is oxygen saturation so your if your average oxygen saturation is like 90 or 92 even um that's pretty low that's low enough that um it would indicate either you have some sort of obstruction going on with your breathing or if you wore an oxygen saturation device, you know, you can buy a, a pulse ox on Amazon for like 26 bucks or something and, and just check during the day as well. Um, but if your average oxygen saturation throughout the day is at 90 or 92, that suggests you got something going on with your blood. You have something going on with your iron status, potentially your red blood cells, um, maybe nutrients are, are, are low in a certain area that are, are, keeping it so that your oxygen is not being transferred out to the rest of your body. So, and then definitely below a 90, you want to start like see a doctor, 
buy a device, start to measure this stuff, make sure it's not the the tracker you're using. You know, you can buy those oxygen saturation devices. But that's where the the trackers can also be very helpful if you do the tracker and your respirations per per uh, minute are like, you know, 17, 18, 20. Um, your HRV is like 19, 12, 10. Like that's a pretty good indication. You're extremely stressed and you should you should get a massage. You should do a Epsom salt bath. You should go float tank, use some B serene IR. Like you, your nervous system, that's, that's in a range that um, is going to cause long-term health complications, whether it's your gut, your brain, heart disease, whatever it is, you will have a really hard time recovering. And so that's where the devices can be very helpful is if you see like 10 minutes of deep sleep, you're like, wow, I'm not getting enough deep sleep, 10 minutes of REM. I don't get enough REM. But as long as you get like a little bit of a baseline above like 25 or 30 minutes of each of those, as long as your um, pulse ox is, is 92, 94, I mean, I, hopefully it's 94 and above, um, things like that, then the devices become less relevant to your, your average daily energy. Like, that's what I care about. I don't really care if the number's a hundred out of a hundred. I care how I feel every day. Right. Um, I don't want to make the device happy. I want me to be happy. And so, uh, I think that's where the devices can really help if you've never looked at them. Um, but that's where they become a trap is once you get you're like, shoot, I don't have sleep apnea, which is what happened to me. I was like, oh, I definitely have sleep apnea. <laughs> I, I did a bunch of tests and I don't have sleep apnea. Yeah. I have a few obstructions, but not enough to even be close to considering it. Um, I used to have only 10 minutes a night of, of deep sleep. And so th and then I did go on a quest to up my deep sleep. Tributern X was actually a big bump in my deep sleep numbers. Um, but as soon as I started um, doing some neural feedback, some trauma training, some supplementation, Tributor next, things like that. I'm above 45 plus, and there's like really nothing else I can really do at that point. Like I'm I'm above the danger zone, if you will. And so I think that's the key. Do you um there's a did you read the question in the QA box? Because they clarified their question. I'm not sure if you saw that. Nope. Okay. Um, I'm they're asking if you're finding total respirations per minute on the sleep tab of aura or with another method. Oh, it's on the, I think it's on the recovery tab or whatever the one is, the the wellness tab or whatever, the HRV tab. I just had my DNA done with um, SNP Nutrigenomics, and I definitely found out that I have a problem, not a problem, but, you know, I don't clear caffeine. And so that's really, really been important for me to know, like, I cannot do caffeine. No. Nope. Stop it. Um, do you do caffeine? I do do caffeine. I, I, oh, yeah, um, no, you yeah, you like it. <laughs> yeah. So, so a few things, few cool things. Number one is if you get over caffeinated, L theanine is the, is one way to hack that. So, right. like if you get heart palpitations, you can take L theanine with caffeine to reduce them. Yeah. But also, you can take it later in the day or take it in B serene IR as it will help cut the half life of caffeine and help offset any extra caffeine in your system. So, um, L theanine is really helpful for that. Um, I have done no caffeine trials to see what how my life changed. I haven't done one though in like four years, so it's probably time for me to, to try again. Um, but yeah, it's a divisive thing, right? Lots of good health benefits are related to tea and coffee, right. um, but also could be really detrimental depending on your health and epigenetics. Right. So, and I read an article about how it takes at least nine hours for it to clear, depending on your, on your snips and the like, my husband can drink it like at 10 o'clock at night and he has no problem. Anyway, I just wanted to find out if you, where you were with that. <laughs> well, I'm a slow metabolizer according to my genetics. Um, but I just try not to consume it after 2 p.m. Okay, that sounds good. And I um, just posted in the chat the podcast episode about the respiration oh, rate. Bears. Okay, cool. Are there certain brain re re brain training programs that you like, Stephen? Um, yeah, unfortunately, they're not widely <laughs> available. Um, there's this really cool stuff called infra slow um, direct current training for the nervous system. Um, you can Google infra slow. It's basically deep wave slow training around your nervous system. Your nervous system has a direct current, like a like a regular 
direct level of current. And then on top of that, all of our brain waves build off of that. So your gammas, your, 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 your like alphas, all those things build theta, all that stuff builds off of this baseline current. And if that baseline is too high, you're always going to be a little nervous, a little anxious, a little revved up. Mine was extremely high. And so infra slow and these other sort of ways of training that helped lower it. And I saw immediate changes in my nervous system and my numbers. So, you know, that feeling for those who are trying to, you know, remember, I always say this parasympathetic versus sympathetic, sympathetic nervous system is when you're stressed and then parasympathetic, which is what Steven's talking about is when you're more relaxed and how I could not keep it straight for me. So I'm like, I need sympathy. I'm stressed. That's sympathetic when you're stressed. So, you know, after a massage, when you're on the table and you're like all chilled out, Shavasana at the end of a yoga class, that's when you're really in that parasympathetic state, like that kind of peaceful state. And you're like, oh, I wish I didn't have to get up and drive because I'm so chill right now. I could sleep for eight hours. This is what we're talking about. And this is where so much of the body does so much healing. Mentally, I find it to be extremely cleansing. Brain fog lifts for me. I feel like, oh, I just, you know, I can do this. Like I have this renewed energy and hope back in my cells and my my mind. And so anything that we can do to help after you've ever had acupuncture, that sort of like, oh, wow, is that is the session really over? You know, this is what we're talking about. So if you- Float tanks. Float tanks. For me, that is not a peaceful situation, but <laughs> for David, it was, he loved it. But yes, things like that. If you- are really looking for a solution there and you're looking for an alternative to alcohol. Let's talk talk about that for a second because you mentioned it already, Stephen. Um, there are new studies that are out that say actually no alcohol is good for you. I'm sure there's controversy around it and all that because there's a lot of emotional attachment to people's relationship with alcohol. But um, quickly, I you know went to the University of Florida and drank enough in those four years to, for a lifetime. And after I grad, in my I come from some alcoholic family up in the upline. Um, my grandparents in um, the father's side and and the mother's side. Anyway, the grandfathers, I should say. So I you know it's been kind of on my mind throughout my life. Like hey, and then I remember being in my apartment after college. And I was reaching on a Friday night for Bartles and James. And for those of you who are too young, it is a wine cooler that tastes like juice, basically. It's like a fancy juicy thing, it's sugary. But anyway, and I remember reaching for it. I was by myself, it was a Friday night. There was like no social activity gonna be happening. It was just me in my apartment by myself, nothing happening that night. Why was I reaching for an alcoholic beverage? And I, asked myself, I wonder if this is more than a habit. I wonder how long I could go without having alcohol. And that was in the 80s and I've had no alcohol since. Like I just stopped right then and there. It made me feel sick. It really, really, gave, my liver doesn't clear easily. I felt terrible. I made stupid decisions. Anyway, um, and so that was something that I was so happy to relieve my bur myself of that burden and that possibility and the downsides of it. And so what if I start to feel like I really need some, you know, red pigment, I will have some blueberries. So that's just me. I also blueberry juice is super tasty. That's just me. I just I'm just throwing that out there. If you're turning, if you're of that, you know, mommy wine culture that is real and you know the glass of wine that you're having is actually you know the size of a quart on a stem i remember oprah talking about that once you know it's something to look at if it's actually not making you feel better like at the like honesty to your third eye to third eye staring at yourself in the mirror in the quiet is this something that is helping you or hurting you just something for you to consider and if you're like yeah siobhan but i'm really stressed and i really need to take the chill off okay so this is where this may be a really big help for you to, and it's topical. It's easy. Those are my suggestions. Okay. Off, 100%. The, soap, off the soap box. Yep. Uh, uh, Maria saying her oncologist said no alcohol since 19, some 2019. Glad to try this option. Okay. 
All right. Yeah. No, I questions? mean, if you guys Comment? just because just because I'm weird and um, uh, it's yeah. not not great for getting people to try B3 and IR, which you really should. But also, there are these cool things called hard ketones. You can try those. They give you a little bit of a ketone buzz. Um, I found that like after two, nothing else really happens. Um, it's kind of fun, kind of interesting, kind of novel. It's a non-alcoholic state changer is what I would call it. But what are they called? Hard ketones? Hard ketones. Just Google it. Um, okay. use the, key, uh, the company I used was Ketone Aid. So I just bought them uh, from Ketone Aid. And I, me and a few friends have played with them. And I don't know, they're a fun option. If, if like you said, you number one, we're all going to cope somehow. Right. And so the goal is to have choice over how you're going to cope. And like you said, you didn't have choice. You were you were just choosing alcohol. I had faces like that. Most people have. In my opinion, the goal is to have choices about how to cope. You know, B-serene IR when you're really, you know, aware and you don't need that much. Maybe hard ketones when you're having a fun Friday and you're like, I wonder what happens. And alcohol, maybe it's a social event. Everybody's doing it and it feels great. Great. The goal, though, is to not be the person who uses you know, a glass of scotch or a giant glass of wine every night just because it's Monday and just because it's Tuesday, just because it's Wednesday. Um, I think that's where it becomes, you know, really an issue. Or just because that's what I always do, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like that. Yeah. And I did post, I did post an article from Chris <laughs> Master John about alcohol and all the, the people who are arguing that abstinence is best and other people who are arguing that, a, you know, two drinks a day is best. And he really breaks it down. And what he does is he, ends the the whole piece with um, it's different for different folks, including like, for instance, the person who mentioned cancer. Um, generally speaking, there are certain conditions that have like you, you would want to be abstinent. Um, there's certain mito mitochondrial issues that you would probably might want to avoid it. And for everybody else, it might be generally okay in moderation. I thank you all so much for being here. We're going to wrap it up. We really appreciate you. Thank you, Stephen, as usual, a very thought provoking and happy, happy chat um let's see i hear you Artie. glad you're here again thanks so much very smart amount of wine that you're doing and it's organic good for you uh listen steve is going to be back next month we have more in store for you throughout the year we have some exciting developments and launches etc that we're going to be keeping you posted on and um steven's also participating and contributing to the gut rescue summit which launches in about a month you've been getting emails asking you to opt in he had a great class on enzymes if for that summit. It's the Gut Rescue Summit, an evidence-based solution to finally get your health back. I don't know. It's a really long title I came up with. I can't remember what it is right now. That's funny, but um, it's all master classes. So if, when you get that email, be sure to opt in so you can see it because he breaks down enzymes in such a fantastic way. It's a great class. So, all right. We love you. Thank you, Stephen. Great yeah, thanks, everybody. You. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Bye, everyone. Don't forget to get that $15 off. You don't need to use a coupon code, free shipping in the U.S. And for those of you- The who webinar are, bonus. The webinar only bonus, that's right. Um, we'd love to have you participate that and get the benefit of that.